In a moment, we'll open the first of three public hearings. Each hearing will begin with prepared remarks to explain the purpose of the hearing and the intent of the warrant article that is the subject of the hearing. Then we will accept public comments and questions. The purpose of public comments is to provide the select board with information for us to consider when we make a decision later this evening whether or not to include that particular warrant article on the agenda for town meeting. The only questions that we will answer will be to clarify the warrant articles under consideration. We will not attempt to justify any of these articles, nor will we address any questions that we consider to be purely rhetorical. If we vote to include any or all of these articles on the town warrant, you will have a chance to argue for or against them at town meeting. Your comments tonight should be designed solely to influence this board in its decision to include or not include the articles for inclusion on the town warrant for town meeting. If you wish to speak during the public comment section, please give your name to Selectman Curtis Hopkins. When it's your turn to speak, he'll call on you. Comments are limited to three minutes. Selectwoman Barbara Gelcher will be our timekeeper. She'll let you know when your time is up. Any questions before we begin? Okay, a public hearing is called to order at 6.32 p.m. to solicit public comments on whether the select board should include a warrant article at town meeting to establish a police revolving fund pursuant to RSA 3195B for the purpose of receiving funds from drug seizures and forfeitures. This fund would be used to pay for police training and for the purchase of police equipment. When law enforcement agencies seize money related to illegal drug operations, the municipality in which the seizure took place can receive a percentage of the seized funds if the municipality has adopted a warrant article such as the one that we're considering. Selectman Hopkins, who's our first speaker? Nobody? I have nobody on the list. Anybody want to address that? I'll address it. All right. Speaking in favor of the of the article, uh, it's long overdue and a lot gives our, gives us a basis. We can always modify it as we go down the road, I would think, but it's pretty restrictive with just the drug money. You might want to change the wording so it can accept any other monies coming in too through those kind of activities. Such as? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not in the police department. Yeah. If Dave was here, he could speak well, to the yeah, Well, th this is a very specific program. Okay. So I don't think we would modify it later. We might adopt another warrant article to do something similar. But this is strictly for seizures and forfeitures, seizures being the money, forfeitures being things that. like vehicles. Yeah, that. okay. Um, but not everybody else may. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, anybody else want to address Janet? Janet McCullough. We already have a fund where we have the uh, pistol permits go into it for the police department. Right. That was moved quite a while ago, quite a few years ago. So I'm, Moved to where? It moved into a fund. It, I actually have an account where it set up community safety, police pistol permits, and right. more training and like that. So this money will go into that same fund. It'll go into the same fund? Yep. Yeah. Oh. I don't have to open up a new one. So that, that accomplishes the same thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm goes into the same fund. Yep. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions on the police revolving fund? Okay. That hearing is adjourned at 6.34 p.m. A public hearing is called to order at 6.34 p.m. to solicit public comments on whether the select board should include a warrant article at town meeting to establish a building permit special revenue fund pursuant to RSA 3195C for the purpose of receiving funds from building permits. This fund would be used to pay contracted building inspectors. At present, the select board can hire a building inspector as a town employee and pay wages to that person, but a municipality is not allowed to contract with a qualified person to perform building inspections for a fee unless the municipality has adopted a warrant article such as the one that we are considering. Do we have anybody 
wishing to speak? Nobody on my list has a right. Anybody want to? Tom? How many building permits have we had this year? I'm not sure. Alyssa? Last year we had $300 worth. Hmm. We're likely, oh, yeah. what, 25 Yeah. Yeah, 25 Can the selectmen answer that? Yeah. 25 No. Well, there's $300. There wasn't a whole ton of them. No, they're only like $25 a piece, $5 a piece. So are you going to change the structure after this foreign article? I mean, of the fees? Yeah. Yeah. And the purpose for a building inspector as well. To I do mean, building inspections. Well, you have electricians must be licensed. Mm -hmm. Plumbers must be licensed. Contractors don't need to be licensed. So what standards are you going to hold the contractors to? The safety code? State building code. State of New Hampshire just passed up adopting the 2015 code in, in favor of keeping the 2009 code. What's the mm -hmm. selectman's stand on that? We don't have one. You don't have one. So I guess what I'm leading to is that do we need a building inspector? We went through uh, Excuse me, Tom. Whether or not we need a building inspector is not the purpose of the hearing. Okay. The purpose of the hearing is... Just whether or not we should set up a fund, to receive, a fund. to receive building permit fees. Sure. That's... You can do that. Okay. Any other questions or comments? This hearing is adjourned at 6.37 p.m. A public hearing is called to order at 6.37 p.m. to solicit public comments on whether the select board should include a warrant article at town meeting to allow the operation of Kino games within the town. This would allow businesses with qualifying liquor licenses to apply to the state for a permit to offer the Keno 603 game. If this warrant article is placed on the agenda for town meeting, and if it passes by a majority vote at town meeting, business establishments with qualifying liquor licenses may apply to the state, and if the state approves, the state will equip that establishment with the necessary machines to conduct the game. Would anybody like to address that? Yeah. Joel? I'd like to urge the uh, selectmen to probably pass that. I think any traffic you could generate for the town of Troy and the businesses that are here would be a great help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would anybody else like to? Yes, sir. What's your name? Josh Ellis. You know what my name is. <laughs> <laughs> I, we've met, but I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't recognize you. Yeah. Now I recognize you. Okay. Uh, I think it's a. I, I urge the selectmen to vote to pass that, too. Uh, you know, uh, they're gonna, it's gonna take and fund, partially fund kindergarten, and the state has stated that it's exceeded the, what the ex expectations by what? Mm -hmm. It's done 1.8 million or something like that already. I don't know, it was on the news. And I've been to restaurants where they have it in Massachusetts, and you don't play it, you don't have to. It's nothing, it's not like, you know, when, Pelto's Bond was in operation with 300 people fighting and drinking. It's nothing like that. Okay. You know, in fact, my wife goes down to Mass to play it. Never come back with any broken bones or black eyes or nothing, you know. <laughs> she wins. I'd rather go with the fighting and drinking. Than you want them? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the parking lot's for. Yeah, really. It would be the first time, huh? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Josh. Anybody else wish to comment on this proposed warrant article? Okay. This public hearing is adjourned at 6.39 p.m. And uh, Barbara or Curtis, do you see any need to take a break before we go into the selectmen's meeting? No, no. I'm all set. All right. This meeting is called to order at 6.39 p.m. on Monday, February 26, 2018. This meeting is being recorded. I move to accept the minutes of our meetings of February 12th and 20th as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes of both meetings are accepted. Announcements. Uh, this coming Friday, we have roller skating at the Troy School. That's at uh, 6.30 p.m., Curtis? Correct. And what is the cost? $5 to rent skates, $3 if you bring your own skates. Okay. And then the following morning, we have breakfast at the Samuel E. Paul Community Center sponsored by the uh, Recreation Committee and the Senior Citizen Club. Is that correct? Yes. And that's $7 for adults, three fifty for children under 10? Correct. Okay. Any other announcements? No. Okay. Uh, 
Curtis and Barbara, do you see any reason why we need to uh, discuss any of the items under old business tonight? Or can we table everything on there? I don't see anything that we're really going to discuss in detail anyway. No. Then I move to table all old business until next week. Okay, fine. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All of the old business is tabled. Okay, under new business. I move that we place the warrant article for the police revolving fund on the warrant for town meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move that we place a warrant article for the building permit special revenue fund on the warrant for town meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move that we place a warrant to allow Keno games in the town of Troy on the warrant for town meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So all three warrant articles will go on the warrant for town meeting. Continuing on new business. We have a, uh, you'll have to help me with this, Alyssa. Comparing uh, U.S. Cellular with Verizon Wireless. What's um, going on with this? We have U.S. Cellular currently. There's a MIFI for the ambulance. It doesn't work. Um, they lose service all the time. They can't get their information to the hospital before they get there. Uh, Mark asked to switch over to Verizon. So I looked into the cost of just switching over the MIFI or switching over all the town lines. And those were the comparisons. They're having trouble with U.S. Cellular. <clears throat> I'm surprised. Usually they have better coverage than anyone in remote areas. They've had horrible, and I know Fitzwilliam has Verizon and theirs for their ambulance and it works. Okay. That's well. why he had asked to switch. All right, let's look at the costs here. Um, it looks like for uh, U.S. Cellular the combined cost is 287.11. And for Verizon is three thirteen a month. Yes. So it's just a minor increase, but for the same number of phones. Yes. All right. If that's what they want, I think we should probably do it. Barbara, okay, what do you think, yes. Curtis? Could be life and death. At that's just for when they lose service on two ledges. No. No. It's, it's a, the U.S. cellular MIFI for the ambulance is not working at all. Okay. So yeah. All right. Okay. I move that we switch the cell service from U.S. cellular to Verizon Wireless. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a uh, email from Mary Bruner from the Complete Streets Project, uh, ready to follow up on the invitation they sent us. I believe we already discussed this, and since we don't have any projects in the pipeline, there's no need for us to apply for this grant to fund any of those projects. Kurt, Kyle, were you raising uh, your hand? Planning board's actually going to be putting in to have a towards that grant. Yep. We want to redo the sidewalk from the end of School Street to the library because the kids are always okay. walking there. It's getting kind of broken down so there might be a good chance to try it. Okay. Which is another reason why I'm here is because, I don't know if you guys remember, closer to early winter, fall, Dice was here. They're talking about the state was going to pave 12, maybe change the medium up near the library. Yes. And on the common. Have we heard anything else on that? Because we thought... Not a word. We didn't want to... You know, build the sidewalk, have them tear it up. Jim Dicey may have heard from them directly, but we haven't heard anything. Okay. And he hasn't shown any approval. check in, you know. He, he had to put money in, put a sidewalk in, and watch half it get ripped up if they're going to change stuff. <laughs> and I, I really don't think he's heard anything since yeah. then. Okay. But so from our point of view, though, the select board isn't going to take any action on this. Yeah. Right. Just so you know, that's what we're working on. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we have a letter from the state DOT. Uh, they're in the process of developing an oversized, overweight permitting software system. They want to know if we want to get on board with it. What this would do is, uh, you, you see on the highway sometimes these wide loads. Uh, this would enable us to restrict certain town roads so they wouldn't go on them. I don't think that's an issue here. They come through here unless, they're, unless their destination is a town road. They're just heading down Route 12. So I don't think we need to take any action on this. And that's everything in the correspondence file. All right, so the only thing we have left to discuss is the job announcement when we hire the successor to Alyssa. Any comments on? 
So I don't know uh, what you guys' opinion on this, but I think we ought to have a board possibly uh, sit down and you know go through everything and I don't need that on see what we can so we can get the best person uh, for the you know best bang for the buck type thing and possibly uh, just because the potential for hiring a town administrator or a um, town manager is a possibility uh, I don't really want to jump into hiring somebody you know without making sure that everything is legit one and that they understand that we might be having, if the town votes for it, a town manager or a, mm -hmm. uh, a town administrator. But that has nothing to do with the situation at the moment. Well, the other thing was uh, hiring, we have NHMA, we, they have assets for us that we can hire. NHMA use. or uh, MRI? NHMA uh, has no MRI, assets. Uh, MRI that can give us uh, some temporary people that we can still pay hourly, or we can borrow from uh, other towns as well uh, until a decision is made. MRI is very expensive. Right, and we went through that before. Yeah. And we're not doing it again. Tom, do you remember how long we had MRI in here? I don't know how long. <coughs> I know it's like 125 an hour. Correct. Somewhere around That's there. what it is. Yeah. You're it was, absolutely you know, right. It was until we. Uh, Brought Rhonda in, I guess. Yep. yep. Two weeks. Not good. Two weeks. Ninety-five bu was ninety bucks an hour plus mileage from Meredith, New Hampshire. Yeah. Well, it's about what you what to expect for a professional. Yeah. What you need. You know. I mean. Uh, Joel. I went through. I'm oh, sorry. Good man. But um, who was going to um, pick this committee to um, um, look? into hiring either a assistant or a town manager. Oh, the selectmen will pick the committee. Oh, the selectmen will, okay. Last time we had a committee, we had a search committee, I think Aaron Pat ran it. Right, he did. He got quite a few uh, applications, mainly because we went through a couple of job sites, I think, so it went out to multiple states. So we had a whole range of job applicants. And that committee winnowed them down to, I think it was the top three or top five, which the selectmen then interviewed and made their decision. But, you know, the job description is gonna be essential. It's gonna be hard to find a good person who uh, is going to take a job based on the chance that we could vote for an assistant or for a town manager, mm -hmm. uh, an administrator or a town manager. Yeah. Um, Although, if someone is looking to move up, that would certainly put them in an advantageous position. It would. Yeah. It would. Um, we did not get any cross any town administrators from local towns wanting to come to Troy. I think mainly because of the pay scale that was yeah. there. Right. Um, we did receive uh, one good candidate who's local, she's probably still around, probably still apply, was in Keene uh, in a deputy role. Uh, her salary requirements were north of 60, I think. There was another accountant in town, somebody that had some good solid accounting experience, and then there was Alyssa that came down. Those three were the finalists. Alyssa was the best of the finalists. Yeah. Curtis, my concern with setting up a, a committee is time. Well, that's why I was saying we can borrow somebody for the time being. We should borrow somebody. Again. From another town, somebody okay. can step in and take. You have somebody in mind? I do not have it. somebody at the top of my head right now. <coughs> there were uh, just if, if if you're looking down that road. Certainly, Rhonda is still available. She's an asset that we could yeah. tap into. Aaron Pat has also offered offered up his assistance. He um, did. He did. I to whom? I talked to him yesterday. Okay, you talked to us. No. Well, we talked you know. to him today. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you didn't tell me. He didn't say anything about that. Right. 
He was not forthcoming with any volunteerism. No, he was. He, he wasn't. He, he wasn't. Uh, as far as as far as any type of you know administration type tasks, he said he'd be willing to help out. So there are some there are there are some options. I'd hate to see I'd hate to see uh, somebody hired because we need somebody. Somebody hired. isn't going to be hired like that. No. We you know, will if, take if our you time. break the job down into functions, you really have you have your payroll functions, and then you have accounts payable and, and uh, your payroll. accounts uh, function. Those are the the payroll, ways. the payroll has always been a sticker because you're on the weekly payroll. Yeah. And you have no backup if I, whoever's actually, in this. Actually, we do. You do. Um, we have somebody coming in to do payroll. Well, I found. Oh, okay. so this is a new thing. Okay, so you get someone in to do payroll. So that's what I was going to say. The other thing is you should also compare how much it would cost to do a, have an outside agency do the payroll. It's only 15 people. It can't be much. Well, it's Moving more, over to a bi-weekly. It's, it's more than that. More than much? Or can't be much? No, it's more than 15. No, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Nevertheless, the yeah. amount that you have, right. it should be looked to outsource it okay. to a reasonable agency because the savings that you'll have moving to bi-weekly payroll will add up. Yeah. And I think most most commercial banks, I think, do that. There are many ways yeah. to do it. Glenn Russ does it. The other thing is, on accounts payable, all you need somebody, a QuickBooks accountant, mm -hmm. which you just put an ad in a QuickBooks accountant. Right. Then the rest is your state stuff. Janet does a lot of it. You guys really don't do much. So you get involved with the running of the town until you find the candidate mm -hmm. you want. But you keep the, the accounting functions moving. Yeah. And, you know, unemotional to say, you know, then you can always get someone to come in, sit in the mornings, change your hours to 9 to 12, hire someone to come in and open the, uh, pull the tax uh, record for the real estate people. Mm -hmm. Then you can survive. Yep. Okay. Barb, what do you think? Um, I think what's going to be proposed next year with the committee has nothing to do with what needs to be done immediately. Well, I think that's a different committee. You said next year. No. What's going on the town report for articles next year to be voted upon as far as town administrator right. and town manager. That has nothing to do with what we have to accomplish right now. Well, it, it, it does in a sense because if you hire somebody, it has to be, they have to have the knowledge that their job may disappear a year from now. Okay, but why would it disappear? A town manager, unless it's an, it doesn't say anything about an administrative <coughs> assistant, that's what we're hiring. We're not hiring a town administrator. We're not hiring a town right. manager. But if we were to hire, uh, we hire Alyssa version two at a, an appropriate salary. Next year, if we hire a town administrator and we also hire an administrative assistant to work with that administrator, that number two person would be making a whole lot less than we've been paying Alyssa or that we would be paying her successor. Not necessarily. Yeah, I think necessarily. Because I think that person might not even be full-time. So if we hire somebody I, right now, full-time, and I'm just going to say 40000 40, a year, just for sake of discussion. Um, next year, if we hire a town administrator, and it's not that person, if that person stays on board, they would probably make less than 40000 and might work less than 40 hours a week. A town administrator or a town manager is not going to sit in this office all day long without a secretary or an administrator sitting at that desk. Well, even if that position is 40 hours, it would probably pay a lot less than we're paying an administrative assistant now who is working alone. Okay. I don't see the math on that either. I don't either. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. You, she's close to 50, right? 50,000? No? Like 46. 46,000. Okay. So That's close to 50. Really? <laughs> so I don't see how you're going to get two people in that in that seat for 46,000. So we're, we're, if the if the uh, if right. the voters approve a town administrator, and that would be a year from now. I that. Yeah. If they were to approve that, 
um, it would certainly be for a lot more than 46000 I would agree. I'm thinking 60 to 70 probably. I would agree. Right. So then if you have a second position in that office. But your, your, your second premise is way off the wall because you're never going to get a town administrator for 68000 or 60000 yeah. in here. Right. I mean, we're, we just can't afford it. We're not that big of a town yeah. to have a town administrator well, and a building and, and town, Tom, you, you, you may be right, and that's why if the Warren article coming up in two weeks passes, that puts together a committee to study all these things and to come up with a recommendation by the end of the year. All I'm trying to do is say that if we hire somebody now for $46,000, we have to be honest with them and tell them, your job may go away a year from now. Then we aren't going to get any money. No. And you don't know. You are going on the premise. This hasn't even passed yet. Mm -hmm. You are going on um, a maybe premise. Yeah. So um, I am not going to tell someone you may not have a job, and we don't even right. know if that. So we won't happen. tell them they may not have a job. Or, 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 let me finish. Oh. What we would, what we do have to tell them is this: okay. there is a Warren article coming up in two weeks to put a study committee together to create to to make a recommendation on whether or not to create a town administrator position. If that Warren article passes, and I expect that that Warren article will pass, and so the study committee will be formed. There is a good possibility that next year, or not even, not even a good possibility, there is a possibility that next year we will vote at town meeting to create that position. And there's a possibility that the voters may approve it for whatever salary we think, or whether the committee thinks is appropriate. If that happens, then the administrative assistant position as we know it now will not exist. Okay, I'm not going to commit to that. Um, I'm not I committing to it. I'm just. It's, it's a possibility. The average salary for a town manager in New Hampshire is $97,909. There you go. Well, that's the so, I mean, for, that's the average for New Hampshire, though. The town administrator in Fitzwilliam is mid-60s? Mid-60. Aaron is 61. Yeah. yeah. Aaron's probably yeah, the best. Another thing, you know, you, you get what you pay for out of life, you know. Absolutely. You're going to get a guy for... Forty thousand dollars, twenty thousand. You're gonna get them off the box. Right, Aaron's you know, underpaid. You, you, for, you for want someone that can manage a town and do something? You're gonna to have to come up with some money. You, yeah. not you are an a good person, but for nothing. And Aaron Pat, Aaron Pat works for the town of Greenfield. He makes sixty-one thousand dollars a year. Yeah. He's probably one of the best town administrators around. Okay. He trains. He trains other town administrators. But what does he have for a girl that works in the office? He doesn't do doesn't. all the paperwork. No, he doesn't. He has a girl part time. How how many hours? Part time. Not a full-time person. Mm -hmm. Well, part-time could be 34 30, hours. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going from 46 here to 61 already. You know, mm -hmm. plus an assistant. Yeah. Part-time helps. Another, you know, so you have to $100,000. Right. They're well I mean, over $100,000. And I don't think that's, this is something... That's what it takes to get good people. This isn't something that, you know, we need to go into about what may happen next year. Right now... The town is in a position where it needs someone. And we also need someone part time. So we are never ever in this position again. This is the second time this has happened in a few years. So we hire a full timer and don't tell them? If that no. passes that town meeting, we, we don't. No, we don't tell they them. are more than welcome to look. I mean, for God's sakes, it's online. Also, we'll let them discover it on their own. Maybe. No, I'm just, I'm just saying. It's, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts here. I, I think a committee would certainly be beneficial. Right. You I know, think. the difference between town manager and town administrator is pretty significant. It is. Uh, town administrator has. We, we know all. We know all that. Good, but he we works under the direct supervision of. Something. Don't interrupt me. The direct supervision of the board of selectmen. Now, the other solution is simply hire by position, like we were talking. Hire a sure. payroll clerk, hire an accountant, and the Board of Selectmen pick up the responsibilities of the Board of Selectmen. For a lot of years, it's been less and less responsibilities handled by the Board of Selectmen. Maybe it's time to re-examine that by this board. You have a new Selectman coming in this year. You know, maybe the three of you decide we're going to run the town for a couple of years and, and define what we need for an administrator. Uh, you don't have to just automatically, oh my God, Alyssa's leaving, we need an administrator. It could be a, a period where 
This board learns about the job, assumes more responsibilities, and at the same time doesn't cost us an arm and a leg to get things done. I think you, that the... Uh, was the hiring committee used last time? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, th I think, I think that, that this. Uh, hang on a second, Herb. I think that this board already does a lot of things uh, that are time consuming, and yeah. it's it's difficult. I mean, Barbara and I are retired. We have the time to do it. I don't know where Curtis finds the time to do everything he does, but right now the way we're set up, the selectmen are doing yeah. so many things that it's difficult to find a person who works full time who's willing to come in here and run for this job. Now you held that job for four years. You know what it's like. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's a five-man committee that needs to be looked at rather than a three-man board. Well, it's tough enough to get three people to run it. I don't. I. I don't have the answer. I do know that you can get by just fine by defining the position. You know, as far as the tasks that need to be done, and the board staying on top of any of the reporting to the state that needs to be done. Otherwise. Barbara. A lot of what you do is just your own mischief. What would you like to see us do? Um, I don't think a committee is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. It might be a very good idea. I don't yeah. think um, we should rush as far as hiring someone. I do think the job needs to be posted, um, NHMA first, in the paper. I think we need to give it at least three to four weeks of advertising. and so that we have a really good pool of people um, that could be turned over to the committee. And um, if you're thinking about telling them about this upcoming position, um, we can't be as picky as we should be. I think you have to tell them. Um, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We're, we're there. <laughs> no, we aren't there yet. The job isn't even posted Every yet. applicant you talk to, you have to tell them this. Well, um, I think it would be uh, criminally negligent not to. Ben, you got something to say? Say yeah. Ben. Ben. We, we're talking about, I mean, everybody's got ideas. We all, there's a bunch of ideas floating around, and I, I think the committee is, is certainly the group of people to suss that out and, and take the time to do that. Um, I, Curtis and I were chatting about this, and, and we talked about this a little bit, and uh, I called um, Cheryl. What's that? Nothing. Oh. I told her what she could do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I called Cheryl uh, White from Fitzwilliam. She's an administrative assistant to the select board down there. She'd be willing to, to um, be on the committee as well, um, which I think would be a pretty relevant person to have on there, um, probably far better than, than myself. I know Herb had talked to Aaron. He's uh, certainly not doesn't want to be part of the committee, but he certainly would be a, would be a resource uh, to the committee uh, if we needed it. So uh, I would definitely be uh, willing to um, be a part of that committee if the board so chooses to create a committee uh, as well. I think it would be hugely beneficial. It sounds like it was beneficial last time. It sounds like there's a lot of ideas floating around here. I mean, we could be talking about maybe two part-time employees, you know, to start with. I don't know what that looks like. I mean, we could be starting talking about a full-time and a part-time to start out with. I mean, there's a lot, I, I think everything's on the table at this point. Um, and it is. Two part-time employees Correct. cuts out the cost of uh, uh, benefits on top of, of each of the employees. So there's, so there's some cost benefits from doing that. I don't know what it benefits for a backup standpoint. I don't know enough about the position to be able to add any insight there, but it can certainly crunch the numbers or something like that. So, Well, another thing also, I think um, as far as part-time for both might be difficult, um, sitting in that chair dealing with NHMA, DRA, um, the town report, um, <clears throat> that is all very intense. Um, and requires a lot of hours and some type of a degree. Uh, I don't think you can walk in off the street. But I'm go to you. I'm, I'm staying out as I'm competent for my job, said Curtis. So I'm just going to sit back here. Well, so the um, <coughs> shut it. So I, I think the degree portion of it, I, I, I would take experience over any sort of degree. And, uh, I mean, personally. Well, that's a degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's yeah. degree. They're that's all degrees. Well, we should go for the yeah. best people we can get in this town rather than just taking what we can get. That's what I'm saying. Experience. If we, if we had somebody with, with uh, 10 years of municipal experience uh, willing to apply for the job and they, and they had a high school, and they were a high school equivalent, I think we should be considering those people. If that comes down to that, but yes. it's highly doubtful we'll, we'll get someone with high school and 10. Right. 
you know, at least certifications in QuickBooks is going to be required. I'd be reluctant to put a degree as a as a requirement. I because think I think at the least an associate degree in um, finance. Accounting, finance, Accounting. or any related. Yes, well, exactly. The you guys put. Sure. Okay, the problem with putting out any kind of an educational requirement, there's two problems that I see. One is that, first of all, you discourage some people who may be super qualified to do the job, certainly capable of doing the job, but because they don't have a stated requirement, they don't apply. The second thing is that if, if somebody does apply who's not qualified and we want to hire them, we've stated that this is a minimum requirement and they don't meet it. If we want to uh, reach out and hire them, what do we say to the people who were qualified and didn't apply because we said you had to have this as a minimum? Okay, on the other end of the spectrum, you don't put any qualifications in there whatsoever as far as degrees are concerned. Sure. We get uh, 50 applicants that are looking for a secretarial position to sit at a desk. Um, in 50 minutes I can read through those. You're not going to be on the board, Al. But why would you? But I'm just pointing out that anybody can do that. But why would you create a posting that doesn't have minimum job requirements? Quick All right. This is what I. I agree. This is what I put in for our first. This is the first draft to <coughs> the second draft of the job announcement. The only absolute requirement for the position is United States citizenship because that's the law. The board of selectmen will consider an applicant's complete record of experience in education, prior administrative experience, especially with municipal government, will be an obvious plus. That way, we can certainly say that, well, we, we hope to hire somebody with the appropriate education, but we're not locked into it. We have the, uh, I say we, it's obviously somebody else will be sitting here, but I'm here right now, so I'm going to use the uh, first person plural. Um, we have the option then to uh, look at all of the applicants and say, yeah, I want this one, I want that one, or I want that one. These are the ones we want to talk to. But no matter what, we have that option. But I don't want to say, well, oh, this is, this person's great. Oh, wait a minute, darn. He's got a degree in English, so we're not going to talk to him. Well, I think, you, I think ultimately finding a sweet spot is going to be the goal. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want overachievers that you can't afford, and you don't want, you know, people that are, that are, yeah, they're, they're going to, you know, put their application in at Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's and stop by here when they're done. You don't, <laughs> you don't necessarily want that. You want to yeah. at least have some, some requirements. Right. That, we but if we get 50 applications, and a lot of them are like that. Like I said, I could weed through those in 50 minutes. But you aren't going to be here to weed through them. I'm, I'm we talking, have to have, that's point. We Barbara, have to have some... I'm not saying that I will do that. Obviously, I will not be here. What I'm saying is, if I can do it, anybody can do it. You can, you can go through 50 applications in 50 minutes and weed out the ones that are absolutely not qualified. Um, Based on the class. resume or on yes. the interview? Uh, resume. We're not even at the interview stage yet. Yeah, You're not going to interview 50 people. I understand that, and that's exactly what you get for your pile after your ad goes out is going to determine which way you're going to move. So just get the pile first. Yeah. Well, you got to you got to put the ad together first. The ad's there, according to Alan. Right. So is that derived from our um, no. job description? No, it's no, from he what he it. came up. No, with. this is from Alan's ad. Right. Let, let me read this aloud. I'll just read this aloud. Of the town of Troy, New Hampshire, is seeking a self-motivated, well-organized individual to fill the position of administrative assistant to the Board of Selectmen. This is a full-time position with a generous benefit package. The only absolute requirement for the position is U.S. citizenship. The Board of Selectmen will consider an applicant's complete record of experience and education. Prior administrative experience, especially with municipal government, will be an obvious plus. A copy of the job description is available at the town website. Go to www, etc. They have to be versed in QuickBooks. Yeah, I, I would we say uh, I'm, I'm sorry, parents and a high school diploma. All right, at I, least. I, I, at excuse least, me. Maybe. First of all, let me apologize for trying to continue speaking while I'm being interrupted. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's okay. You're doing good. Yeah, I won't read the rest of it then. No, I would that. like to hear the rest of it, please. Say again, please. I'd like to hear the rest of it. Can, can I do this without being interrupted? Yes. Thank you. Closing date, and, and by the way, the next three paragraphs contain dates, so just ignore the dates. These are just, this is just a draft. Closing date is Wednesday, March 7th. Cover, uh, submit cover letter and resume as a Microsoft Word document attached to an email to selectmen at Troy, New Hampshire, or mail hard copy to board of selectmen at this address. Interviews will begin immediately and continue through Saturday, March 10th. The board of selectmen is flexible about scheduling interviews. The board of selectmen anticipates making a hiring decision on Monday, March 12th. Starting date is negotiable. The position will be vacant by that time and will be available immediately. Troy is located 10 miles south of Keen, blah, blah. 
starting salary depends on education and experience. Benefits include blah blah. Health insurance package covers, etc. Additional weeks of vacation offered with longevity. Work week is Monday through Thursday, 40 hours, and includes Monday and Thursday evening hours. Questions may be emailed to Selectman. Comes in on March 7th, and you're making the decision. Forget the dates. Forget the dates. Those okay. are just, that's a draft. I had to yeah. plug no, something that's in. Okay. But you have to state that they're going to. I can't hear you. Mark. You're going to have to state that they are going to have to have. They're going to have to be well versed in QuickBooks okay. and knowing how to do it all and like that. All right. right. What if somebody is fully qualified but doesn't know QuickBooks? How long would it take them to get qualified in QuickBooks? I have no idea. Ask Alyssa. She knows. Are you paying? Every year, so I don't know. Say again. Is the town paying for the QuickBooks training? I, I don't know what's required. That's why I ask. Is it something you can learn in a half a day? No. Oh, no. Okay. no. I, I, don't, I don't know anything about QuickBooks, so that's why I'm asking. I don't either. No. Uh, you can't learn it in half a day. It is, it's, it's not that complex. Yeah. But if you have an accounting background, if they have any type of accounting experience, yeah. it's, it's, not that, it's, it's not that complex. Yeah, I mean, it's all online training. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's there. It certainly needs some polishing. And um, mm -hmm. a part it's, of that is... is what is it that we're actually hiring? It sounds like we're set, we're set on full-time benefits the whole nine yards. Um, you know, and the idea of, of a couple of part-timers uh, is, is still on the table as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, in order, to, in order to really put together the proper job posting, I think this needs to be talked about in a little greater detail as far as what is it that, that the town wants to do. I agree, I agree with you. Well, I put this together last week. In fact, last Tuesday night, I brought it home from this meeting. Yep. And again, this was just to put something on paper yep. so that we have a starting point, yep. so, rather than just sit around and discuss it. Yep. Yep. This way, you can argue about something specific. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I had never considered two part-timers yeah, until think, tonight. Right, and I think, too, um, they're, they're absolutely right. You've got to have some sort of um, experience pieces in there, like, like minimum requirements. I, I think... Um, I mean, it's, this is definitely an office job, but, but yeah. QuickBooks is certainly okay. a piece of that. that, that that's demonstra yeah. Demonstrated proficiency with Microsoft Word and Excel. Yep, those and, are pretty standard. And PowerPoint. Is yep. there anybody these days who isn't? Most people aren't. Most really? people can open a document or can I type can in a spreadsheet, yeah. but as far as manipulating the data and actually okay. using it, All right. no. Much of this right. should be in the job description, though. Like, like when you have a job yeah. description properly written, you have all of those items in there at the bottom of the job description. So you should be able to basically take out from there what you need to plug into your ad. Do we have a job description where you can? Yes, I'm looking at it now. The third page say see, see attached job description. Yeah, I don't see any mention of QuickBooks in here. Did I miss it? I don't. I don't know that we put it in. Yeah, or yeah. Word or Excel or PowerPoint. I don't. We didn't use PowerPoint here, do we? No. No. No, no you don't. Word yeah. and Excel are. Hmm? are you don't. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. I think Microsoft Office Suite should yeah. be should be a minimum yeah. requirement. Proficiency in Microsoft All right. Office. All right. So we could we could add that for that again. I think right. that goes in the job description, not in the ad. I would put it in the ad. You think so? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yes. The QuickBooks certainly in the. All right. I like Microsoft Office too. I don't. I don't know how yeah, it feels. Just like an office that would work fine. Yeah. And I think, as far as experience is concerned, you have in here municipal government mm -hmm. or school district. Uh, technically, a school district is a municipal government. Okay, you're not going to spell it out. All right. We that's could. Fine. I mean, just thought I'd throw that at you. Um, I don't know what they do at the school district. Is that comparable? Well, I'd say a lot of what they do as far as our they system is DRA, concerned would be yeah. e very easy to adapt to yeah. okay. if they worked at the school district All right. in some um, capacity. Another, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Another piece of this that needs to be resolved, too, is the um, welfare officer part of Yeah, it. we haven't brought that up yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I spoke to Mary Drew on Friday. I had a very nice conversation with her, actually. Um, when she came in last week, she, I don't think she had a full understanding exactly what we were looking for from an audit standpoint. So she's putting together a package that's going to include everything for um, updating our guidelines, all new forms for us. Uh, she's going to put together uh, additional recommendations she talked about um, doing by appointment only in the office in here, um, as opposed to just taking anybody that comes in through the door throughout the day. 
But um, we can't do that. We did discuss that, Ben, when she was here. I talked talk to her and she said it's going to be in her recommendation. So we can Right. She is in. writing two letters here and to the Budget Committee. Um, I, asked her, I asked her to go, uh, go a step beyond that and because our, our guidelines need to be updated. She, okay, she but our the guidelines are illegal. I, I, think we're, I think we're getting off topic here. Yep. But, but my point is, is that she's willing to also come and train the new person. Okay. She said she would love to be involved in training the new person, even if it's a couple sits. Mm -hmm. She said um, uh, training good habits is, is, is what, what she does. Good. So. That's, that's good. But so there's another resource that we can we can utilize to make this transition that much smoother but we cannot set hours in this building um, mary does hours because she goes from one town to another it is acceptable for her to do that we can set hours we right cannot, we cannot deny somebody an application when right when they walk through the door they need to be taken care of no nope. um, no nope. Then well, then you, uh, you need to call um, NHMA and talk to right, the attorney. All right, so let, let, let's, okay. yeah. let's, let's stop the discussion about welfare. No, we can no. talk all night about that's that and not agree. And that's not really what want. this discussion is about, okay? Right. All right. We did it get expensive. Yes. I think right now, if we, if we decide to go with the committee, mm -hmm. then we don't have to polish up this job description or the job announcement tonight. Right, that's right. correct. So the question, the first question should be, do we want to go to a committee to, to research this further? And if so, how much time do we want to give the committee? I'll make a motion to go with the committee. Um, much how time much time do we want to give them? Yeah. I'd say a minimum of four weeks. Really? For the committee? Okay. You mean forming the committee or giving the committee? No, oh, I, I think we could come up with the names and appoint the committee by the end of this week. Um, by next Monday night at the latest. You can always add I'll somebody to the committee about, afterwards. Okay, we don't we don't have to decide on the timeline tonight. Okay. Okay, we can um, I decide. Would you, I would think you'd want to give them as, as as much time as they need. You'd obviously want them to be expeditious about it. So you don't yeah, want you want to give them, them some guidance. Kind of yeah. yeah. I don't want to leave it too open ended. No, not too open ended, but but not not so where they where they rushed into right. rushed into some kind of a decision. Yeah. It's an urgency and not an emergency. Right, I agree. Yes. You need to right. pick a so you're, you're, you're comfortable with the committee? committee? Absolutely. Curtis, it was your idea, so you are, and I'm fine with it. All right, so you have a motion? I have a motion to establish a committee to for the hiring of a either full-time administrative assistant or a part-time or look into that position to be filled and to let right. them know that that position may or may not go away within a year. Okay. And did I hear the word to recommend to the select board in there? And to recommend to the select board. Okay. All right. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we just have to figure out who's going to be on it. So like I said, Cheryl White would, well, would, would be willing to be on it. I would be willing be to be on it. it. All right. All right, so let's, let's start right now. Okay, I nominate Tom to be on the committee. Well, I think we need to think about this, too. I mean, yeah. can't we have a few days to think about? There might be some really great candidates also All right. that we might want to assign to this committee that aren't in this room. That, that's fine, and we can do that. Um, we didn't establish a number of people for the committee. That's open-ended, and I think that's good. Uh, well, I think that that's right. Yeah. All right. Do you want to wait and not appoint anybody tonight? Or do you well, want to get started tonight? Yeah, if you got to volunteer. Well, we got volunteers already. I think Yeah, yeah I think we jump should. right on right now and then move All forward. Right. So right I now. nominate Tom to be a member of this committee. Okay, can't we just take a list and get back to people? Okay, this is how many we have. Do you still want to be a part of this committee? So everybody knows who is going to be on the committee. Everybody has the right to know who they're working with. All right. We can take names, we can call people, it's not a problem. So, I got Tom Matson, Cheryl White, Aaron Pat, Ben uh, he, he He won't be on the committee. He won't be on the committee? No, he'll be, he'll be a resource, he said, though. Resource? Yeah, okay. he doesn't have time to be on the committee. He'll be a fantastic so, resource, though. Tom Matson, Cheryl White, and Ben Drug for the first three. All right, so what do you want to do, Barb? Okay, we need to see if we can find some other people. We have to have... Okay. 
So, but and we we need to have a very group of people. All right, but what, right? I'm, what I'm getting at is procedurally. Procedurally, what do you want to do? Do you want to wait until we have a list of people who say they're interested and then appoint the whole list, or do you want to appoint them one at a time? We can appoint them all. We can call them, and everybody can come in. Okay. Okay, and we'll sit all right. down. How and much talk time about do you want to take for this? A week. How's a week? All right, so uh, next Monday night, yeah. we'll invite to the Selectman's meeting everyone who's on our list. Everybody who is interested in doing it. Well, if they're not interested, they're not going to be on our list. But I assume that what we're going to do is contact them individually and say, would you be interested? Correct. And if so, come to a meeting. Correct. So everybody who's on our list who shows up at the meeting is interested. Okay, go ahead. What? Yes. Okay, all right. Say. All right, I move that we do that. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have anything else to discuss on this issue tonight? Kyle, do you have something? Well, I was just going to say well, for that committee, might want to consider, I know Ben, that's a good issue, but part time, no benefits. A lot of people are not looking for the benefits, and without that, you may not be able to retain people. Yeah, I think that would. And just I don't be want. To, we're already talking, yeah. you know. And that's something. That, that's something the committee. We have another yeah. leaving. We don't want to have that happen again in a year or two. Yeah. Because another town offers benefits, maybe for a part-time position. We're not. Yeah. I think we're really looking to make sure we retain people. If it costs a little more, it yeah. probably costs us less aggravation in the end. Yeah, yeah. and that's something the committee would look at. Yeah, because it's definitely higher turnover on part-time. You want? Do you want to be in the committee? Yeah. All right. I'm not quite politics, but. All right, so we have four people interested so far, just in this room. Yeah, I agree. Joel, would you be interested? No. Okay. Now, should a member of the select board be a member of this search committee? Or is it a, is it a search committee? Well, I'd, I'd like to nominate Dick Faxon on the committee. He's not a member of the select board. <laughs> And he's a good businessman, he has good connections around. But he will be a member of the select board. Then that's fine. So, you know. Yeah, it makes no difference. Yeah. All right, I'll call him. All Not right. a problem. Okay, anything else on this issue, Curtis? Yeah, when thinking, when thinking about it, the committee, it made sense to have some representation from the select board on it. Okay. So, there will sorry. be. Yeah. There will be. Right. Okay. What, what if Dick says, I haven't got time to do that? Then we'll go to somebody else. That's There's lots you. of people. <laughs> it's always me, isn't it? <laughs> I'll volunteer for it if needed. Right. But you can't both do it. No, we cannot both be on it. We're at support. All right, Curtis, do you have anything else on this issue for tonight? I have nothing else on this issue. Barbara, anything else no, on this issue for tonight? Else. Does anyone else here have anything on this issue for tonight? Does anyone else here have any other things they want to raise tonight before we get out of here? Yes, I do. Joel. I come here tonight to try to urge the two senior select persons to uh, ask the freshman select person to probably um, voluntarily submit his regular information. On what basis? On what basis? Misuse of your elected power. Misuse? What's what? trying to intimidate a witness? Who is intimidated? The fellow that um, you had a trailer in your yard, and your statement to him was, do you know who I am? I am selected. He was uh, trying to retrieve some property of his that you had on your property. Yes, and there's an ongoing investigation. Yeah, that, and I'm not getting into the investigation, but I don't believe the and, select uh, person. It was not worded that way, oh, just was. so you know. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. I was okay. there. Uh, so it was Dave Ellis, Jeff Masick, and uh, Mr. Hannett. Okay. Because I have heard it from one of the police officers as to that statement. That you made. Okay. Uh, but I'm pretty I sure it was that. taken out of context because the way it was worded was uh, I was asking if any charges are going to be filed uh, because I am a selectman for the town of Troy. Okay. So yes. I might have said that, I don't know pretty that. much I did say it. I also did say that I was a member of the military, of the armed forces. I also did say that I was worked for the federal government as a civilian. I just don't There's a couple things that. that I said. I that just too. don't want to see the town get into another 
scandal, like Cindy say this, where she not gets hot selling groceries and then all of a sudden the town people hire a lawyer to select people to get her out of it. And mm -hmm. No bells go on. Say, like, hey, hey, what's going on here? <coughs> Ladies, what is she doing here? You know, stay here for another 10 years and rip the town off her blind. I'm not stealing from the town. I didn't say you were. So, as for resigning, no, I'm not going to. <sighs> Does anybody else have anything they want to raise for tonight, Tom? Yeah, I do. Uh, same subject as Joel. I was approached by a couple of uh, town employees uh, expressing concern that one of the selectmen was uh, under investigation for theft. When it's one of the selectmen, that includes all three of you. You know, and of course, being the gossipy kind of person, I pressed and they said, yeah. Curtis was being investigated for stealing a trailer. No, not for stealing a trailer. For purchasing a trailer. Ah, that's okay. Uh, and uh, Because I don't think the select board has anything to do with You're that absolutely investigation. Right. Except for the point, fact, where it brings in these two. Because and when, just when let me finish, let me happened. finish. Because when one selectman acts on his own, it doesn't represent the rest of the board, but to the public, a selectman stealing something is, could be any one of the three, okay? And so it doesn't do anything for this office. And I don't agree with Joel that you should resign, but I think that it's certainly proper that while you're being investigated for a criminal act, that you step off the board for that period of time. Ben? Um, we have this nice little thing in our country called due process. I would certainly allow that to run its course. Thank you. That's, that seems... Curtis, are you being investigated or is the incident being investigated? <laughs> the incident is being investigated. That's what and I thought. I was told by the police department that um, under the certain, certain circumstances of how everything happened, yeah. and there's documentation to back it up, yeah that I have nothing to worry about at this time. That's the way I understood it. Okay. So, to stop all the hearsay, uh, I, I, I purchased a trailer, yes. Did I know it was stolen? No, I was not aware that it was stolen. It was bought out of Texas, and it was stolen out of Florida. The police are doing their investigation. Let them do their investigation. I think what they're looking for is who actually stole it. Exactly, and, yeah, and I am not a... It was, it, it obviously wasn't you, nor was it the person you bought it from. And Correct. It goes back a few generations, and I think that's what they're trying to establish, the chain of possession. Correct. Well, there you go. Like I said, it's not this board's concern about his investigation. However, the statement, one of your selectmen, indicts you all. So. Well, I think we've got that on the recording now. So. Yeah. Yeah, my concern wasn't wasn't that. That's up to the police. Up. My concern was the, a, a select person thinking, you know, because I'm the select person in town, I can do what I want, or using that to intimidate someone. I don't believe that's what this board is. It was taken out of context. Because the way I worded it was not saying, you can't do anything to me because I'm a selectman. I did not word it like that. It was actually more concerned about uh, being in the working for the federal government, having a security clearance, being in the military as a senior leadership, and being a selectman for this town. I didn't want to incriminate any of those people. If I did something wrong, I will pay the consequences for my actions. I have no problem doing that. But let the due process happen, and they were taken out of context. Being, a, being a selectman, though, gives you no rights whatsoever. I didn't say it did. I did not All right, say I'm just making any, that clear. I understand it doesn't give me any right to use my position. It's actually an NCO creed that you do not use your position, your rank, or anything for personal gain, profit, or anything like that. I do not do that. Then it shouldn't have been mentioned. But it was mentioned. We are here by you. We are here on Monday night to conduct business for the town. Correct. That's it. That's it. You didn't bring it up. He brought it up when the cops went to his house. He said he was a selectman. I also That's said what I was, was a federal employee. Out. I was also a member of the military. 
I think Dave Ellis knows he's a selectman. Yeah. Um, so I think Dave Ellis knows he's a selectman. Um, he lives a couple houses down from me. Okay. So. There you go. Small I don't, town. I don't think it small was town. Dave Ellis. He, he was selling it to. I think it was the guy that actually. The asset owned, recovery guy. the trail. Yeah. Tim Parsons is his name. Yeah, I don't know. And I talked with him, and he, I did not give him any hard time. I did mention that if there's an issue, we need to contact the police. He did. The police showed up. There's an investigation now. I'm not resigning as of right now. Right. It's turned over to the state police. They're investigating it. So. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, dare I ask, does anybody else have anything Small else to Small town scuttlebutt. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to add something. Ben. So we got to circle back to the, um, the uh, welfare officer position. So in my conversation with Mary Drew in asking her to um, help update our, just, just like what we had talked about the budget committee, to, to help audit our program, update all of our guidelines, um, update <coughs> our uh, forms, and along with the recommendations, she said that she might be looking at um, a couple of hours of time to get it done. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much time she was looking at, but she was looking at. She said, "Well, I, I came in, I did the, um, I did the review on Tuesday. I wasn't going to charge for that. Um, this packet's going to be a little bit more than I had anticipated. Uh, should be 100 or 200 dollars. Um, I would like to ask the board to um, approve not only a 100 or 200 dollars for for Mary Drew to finish this packet for us, but um, maybe even an additional 500 dollars to anticipate for her, you know, whatever we need her for in the future for." Training our new Gee, maybe we should run that by the budget committee. Well, you have a Why don't you take the job as welfare officer? You know, I mean, you're certainly interested in it. You got the desire and drive. Take it over. Be a good fit. Why would I do that? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Everybody else takes on difficult assignments in this town. Give it a shot. I'm already on the budget committee. Oh, well, that's a tough one. Well, this will be a fun, fun committee to work on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, up to up to $500 would probably be uh, a bargain if we get what we think we're going to get out of this. Mm -hmm. So I move that we authorize uh, up to $500 in consulting fees uh, for uh, welfare consultants. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. Well. Because he went ahead and did it first instead of coming to us first and saying he'd like to contact Mary, see if he could put something yeah. together, and at that time... Right. Yeah, I'm kind see, of confused. It, what, what this is kind of backwards. Here, you're going out and making commitments that the selectmen are writing a check to cash. Uh, actually, actually, no, that commitment had already been made to Mary. No, only one commitment was made to Mary, and it was free of charge, and it was for her no, to come when, in here. When I contacted her initially, um, the way I left it with her was she would contact Alyssa to make an appointment to come in, that she would sit down and go over and see what we had, and we would pay for that. If she didn't say that would be for free. Oh, I didn't understand. Uh, that. I, I said we would pay for it. Now, she didn't say, oh, no, you don't have to. We just we didn't discuss it, but I did tell her we would pay for it, and that then she would tell us what she thought she would need to do in terms of time and number of business to come in here and do the things that Ben just described. Right. So then and she I came did in not, here. Okay, but I did not understand that. We did not right. discuss well, that. Long and short of it is, I was paying attention throughout this entire process, and this did not go the way that uh, I anticipated it going, the way the whole entire budget committee anticipated it going, the way the select board anticipated this going last Tuesday. Hence the phone call to Mary Drew to get to the bottom of this. To the bottom of what? Yeah. To the she bottom of, a, of an audit that didn't take place. We were asking her to come in here and do an audit of our welfare program because we have spent double what we what we had planned on, what we had been spending in the last three years. That's that's right. all we were asking for. There's no finger pointing. There's none of that. We just need an audit. When you have expenses go through the roof, and you have no real reason why, you, you have an audit done. Ben, wait, you asked her to do an audit, and she didn't do it. Is that no, the no? Wait, yes, Ben. Price. When I talked to Mary, the word audit never came up. To review our program in yeah. detail. Okay, all right. Right, right. She right. did. But she didn't do it? And yes, she did. It, it. We sat right here for over an hour, an hour and a half. Okay, so she did do the audit then, right? No. No, 
she, she did a review of the program that didn't even come close to what the budget committee was talking about. The budget committee asked specifically for the select board to contract a professional to find out why we have expenses going through the roof in the last year. And what was the result of their... She report? felt everything that Alyssa was doing, she was doing correctly, and in many instances was going above and beyond to um, Alyssa trying to get them off of welfare by putting them in contact with other agencies that would help them move forward right. and get off our welfare budget. Our regulations and are illegal. The, the town guidelines are illegal. We, we are required by law to adopt town guidelines for welfare that meet five different criteria. We meet one out of the five different criteria in our guidelines. Like I said, why don't you join in on that and, and do the job, get it straightened out there. Then. You know, no it idea, sounds like... I have no idea why you're saying that. Because you're obviously critical of the way it's currently being run. You've done the research into how it should be run, and you're passionate about the subject. So why don't you why don't you volunteer to take it on for a year? Because I, I, I can guarantee all, it's, it's not as simple as, as you're trying to make the position. No, no, it's called the art of welfare for a reason. The art of welfare. You read the, loaded, you read the book. It, 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 it's loaded with gray areas. It's loaded with gray areas, and it's a tough thing to, to traverse. It is. Yeah, and it's really, really tough to traverse without any guidelines. You should have, you should have been here when Cindy was running it, for God's sakes. You know, the, the, where it went from then to now, you know, is 180 degrees. I, I know. <clears throat> you know, and then you have one person in the office, and you're expecting her to do the administrative stuff, and then turn around and revamp the welfare pro program. She, she's, how, she's how many people have, have sat down and worked welfare with her? I mean, Ben, when I was selecting, I used to have to, I mean, I'd go get food, deliver food, take care of uh, old ladies that are living in one room with one heater in the middle of the winter. I mean, I shelled shell more hundred dollar diaper bills out of my pocket than I hate to count because you can't give away money, you know? You can't sometimes uh, give it a shot. Step up to the plate and do a job in this town. Do a welfare job, give it a shot, you can do it. You don't need a college degree to do it, you can do it. Okay. Does anybody that's, else have anything else? There we go. Yeah, thank you, Tom. That was the only way I see is I know as he's been doing is make sure you don't get in that city situation, which right. should be taken seriously. Right. I mean, if he doesn't want to do it, maybe he does not feel qualified. He wants someone better at it, so that's what we should do. We should go for someone better. Yeah. Like three thousand dollar a year budget for that position. You know, you've got to pay for that about. position. And now you're talking about, geez, our welfare costs have doubled. <coughs> And we're going to go from 3000 to how much for a welfare professional to do it? Because that position isn't even around anymore. We're going to have to bring that to the town meeting to get them to hmm? make nice. the position. Well, the another elected position is like they used to be like on that no, yeah, What happened to the... Um, in 2013, it switched to a, um, a hired position. Yeah, the so well, the yeah. position is still there. Yeah, the position still exists. It's just done through um, the select board as a, right. as a hiring process now. What happened to... Because I remember you said this year's budget was cut in anticipation of, what was it, 100 or the Troy House or something? No, that was last year. That was last year's budget was mm -hmm. cut? Mm -hmm. But it was cut this year also by the budget committee. And, and one of the points Mary Drew made when she was here, um, she wanted to know where the balance of welfare for this year was going to come from because it had been cut so low. My, my, my thought was, is it a little bit disproportionate from looking at double because we cut it in anticipation of, was it the Troy House? No, my neighbor's house. My neighbor's house this was. Was that why? Did that throw off the numbers a bit? Is it, well, well, is it way off from two we, years ago? We cut the welfare cut? budget. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I believe we cut it from 50000 to 30000 and then and then spent sixty. Yeah. The average, so you went, the like, before you cut in anticipation of 100 nights, you went 10, 15 over? So it's not like 30, 40 over. Is, are I'm you sorry, saying, say that again, please. The 100 nights, obviously you said you cut anticipation. 100 nights. 
No, you mean my house. neighbor's house. Neighbor's house. You cut the budget in anticipation of that. In anticipation of having them provide some relief. Yeah. And they is did that, not. Was that determined to be a large portion of why it went over? Or is it just a multitude of factors? In, in terms of percentages, yeah. But even if we had not done that, if we had left the welfare budget the way we wanted it, we still would have overspent it. Yeah. I figure we should make sure we take into account that little slip up of assume the neighbor's house would help out. Well, the, what happened there was that my neighbor's house gave back a $50,000 donation that the select board generously gave them from the Georgiani bequest. And um, the following night at town meeting, I had a list of amendments to the town budget. And I started out with one for the supervisors of the checklist, which um, uh, Sandy Goodwin had given me that night, before we, just before we started the meeting. And we got that. It was approved. Then I voted, I moved to amend the library's budget, and I had about four or five things on my list. But after we finished with the library, uh, I think it was Carl Patton who said, move the question. And so I, I never got to the, uh, to put in the welfare budget back to where it had been. So the budget is set this year for $36,500 for 2018. That's what the budget committee set. The budget committee set that based on a uh, three, uh, four year average of what was spent in the welfare department. We spent uh, about $58,000 this year in 2017. Um, we, looked at, we looked at Jaffrey. They have a, a similar demographic to what we have, and they've got this, this trend that's, that's following um, you know, the um, poverty rate trends that have been trending off in, in all of New Hampshire, specifically our area. Their trend has been going down as well. Uh, we noticed that ours, shot right up in the last 18 months. I mean, just shot right through the roof. So uh, the budget committee said, well, we should probably get somebody in here to see if there's anything we can do about it. So yeah. here we are today. Which is fine, I like that idea. I just want to make sure we weren't getting mad at each other just because we made a draw. No, the the, that was inconsequential. <laughs> Actually, that was inconsequential because we dropped it from 45 to uh, 35 for that year, and it was, um, it went through the roof for that. Last year was, uh, I think, 42. 42,000 for uh, 2016. Yeah. So, and as far as what Mary Drew said about the budget, she said specifically, you have to pay for it if you if, you have, if, you, if you determine that's right. that you have somebody yeah, that's like any of the bills the town gets. Yeah. Of course, you have to pay with exactly. budget. And if you like highway part, let's say something broke, they're at the end of the budget, but then you spend 20 grand. It sucks. It goes over, but yep, yep, you have to pay for it. So. We um, do, but we have to find the money in the budget somewhere to counterbalance that money. Well, we do we have to pay for it, but everything in the budget <coughs> for this year has been cut so drastically that um, where do we find that money? Recreation department. <laughs> now we got $400. They don't even have we enough money. We got $400 out of the selectman's office, so we can cut every budget drastically. What are you, what are you well, no, I think the, the, the point is, is, that, is that your position is that we're okay with just, just throwing that without looking any further at it. And let's just, let's just keep an open check for that going forward. We can't. You're just telling me that, that we have to find a place to pay for it. How about we find a place to save it in that department? Okay, the point is everything, when she was sitting here, everything we discussed she said we were doing according to how we should be doing as far as this office setting hours according to nhma when those doors are open in the morning we have to be available to have someone walk through that door and present us with an application yeah you do, you do not have yeah, to sit down and do like this yeah. they take the, yeah you do not have to take appointments Mary Drew's recommendation is to do weekly appointments, whatever day it is, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, 9, 9.30, 10. That's after I'm, talking, I'm talking. Good. So what she was saying is that she was going to make a recommendation that you do X number of appointments a week. Yes, we discussed that. You either fill it or you don't fill it. And if you don't fill it, then you don't have any that day. You don't even allow any walk-ins that day. Okay. Can so, I that, so this is a... The narrative here is yeah. no. Ben, we have walk-ins every day. Ben, the only thing is, when somebody from welfare needs welfare, like let's say they run out of fuel oil, they <coughs> in that house, 
they come to that door, you do give them an application. You have to hand them that the paperwork that That's they've right. got to do. Then they and then they can, then you can make the appointment right. and they can come back for the appointment to see if they qualify or if you're going to say no. Nobody's disputing that fact. Right. Nobody's disputing that fact. And we do it right now. Okay. So basically, because the door is open, you've got to address it. Right. You don't have to address it. What we're talking about you is you address it for the, you, app, you, the you, application. You, yeah, you can that. hand the application, but you have to sit there and conduct a full interview and go through that entire application. We never do that. No. no never. We don't do, we don't do that. We don't, we don't do that. I didn't think that we ever did. No, we don't. We set don't. Up appointments once they have all their paperwork. That's that right. Everything. Once they have all. Of it. At least that was the last 27 years that I worked here. Right. And it's still it's the same <laughs> way. All, 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 all I've ever heard, heard is that the yep. welfare duties take up so much time in this office that other things can't. That's be done. not the end of it, Ben. You don't know what you're talking about. That's her. That's her. what I've heard. Her. And you Sorry. don't know what you're talking Sorry, about because ben. you don't know my name. That's what Phil <laughs> said. That's what Quit said. the sarcastic attitude. I've had it up to here with you. And I'll tell you something else. You do not know the process. Uh, you you have no, your finger You out. have no idea what the process is and what she does during the day. You have no idea. You just proved it. Stop, stop pointing your finger at me. Okay. There's a lot of emotional You tell me to shut up. You just tell me to shut up. All right, everybody stop. Everybody stop. Um, let's. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we beat this issue to death. Uh, Mary is going to be contacting Alyssa. What? She's going to send it to the. How much time have you got left here? She'll contact Barb. That'll go well. Well. She's going to contact the selectman's office. Okay. She's going to send me a copy of that packet as well on behalf of the budget committee. Okay. Fine. Okay. Does anybody have anything else they want to raise tonight other than things we've already discussed? No. Good. I, I move to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 7.47 p.m. <laughs>